The inspiration for this idea came during my finals. I was revising at a friend's apartment and her roommate came in and showed us this video that he'd taken using a tiny camera on board his drone. And in the video, you could see him in the distance. And he was piloting the thing via this pair of virtual reality goggles. And this was completely new to me at the time. And I just thought, wow, you know, this is a completely revolutionary way of experiencing the world around you. You can move freely in three dimensions. You can gain stunning new perspectives on things. It turns out that even places you thought were familiar look completely different from a bird's eye view. And thirdly, you can move fearlessly. You know, at terrifying speeds or right up close to wild animals if you want to. And if you crash or get eaten, you just take your goggles off and you're fine. In that respect, it struck me as being very similar to a computer game, in that it offers all the thrills of extreme sports without the risks. Only the difference is that the world you're exploring this time is real. But the more I thought about it, and the more I measured the drone against this computer game analogy, the more I realised there was something missing. So what makes a good computer game? Now, usually you start off with an environment, a uh, world if you will, and then the world is populated with objects, uh, finite entities which can move and perhaps interact with each other. And then there's you, you have to have some way of moving around this world and perceiving these objects. And to that end the drone is very similar. But a game doesn't stop there. If all you got to do in a game was control a floating entity, able to merely observe your surroundings, no one's going to buy that game. Now, equally, if in life all you got to do was walk around like a ghost, able to perceive the objects around you but unable to affect them, well, life would get pretty boring. What humans crave as part of our inquisitive nature is interaction. It's never enough to merely stand and look at uh, the beautiful, undisturbed surface of a lake. There's something within our innate programming that tells us we have to pick up a rock and attempt to skim it across. Humans desire to experiment with cause and effect, and only then are we satisfied. That's it. That's what's missing. In the next stage in the development of this technology is a whole host of peripheral accessories that allow the user not just to perceive the environment they're exploring, but to truly interact with it. So naturally I started to come up with ideas in my free time, and that's how I came up with the claw concept. So coming back from London one night, I met this American girl on the Megabus uh, and she was an engineering student too and so we got talking and exchanged contact details and uh, it turned out she was only here for a few months before she was due to return back to the US. So I said hey before you leave you have to come and visit the little town of Sheffield and I'll give you a tour because uh, I had a little bit of a crush on her I think um, and she visited and I showed her around all the old industrial museums and we, you know, nerded out over engineering stuff. Sheffield has been the centre of Britain's engineering and steel industry since the rise of the Industrial Revolution. It's a little known fact, but uh, stainless steel was actually invented here by Harry Burley back in 1913. And Sheffield soon became the biggest producer of stainless steel in the world. which is how it earned the nickname Steel City. Uh, what do you think to that, nerd face? That was so cool! <laughs> so, after a long day sightseeing, we got back to mine, and uh, I think we were going to watch a movie or something, but I'd had this idea for the claw just a couple of days before, and I guess with a little injection of inspiration from the day's engineering-themed adventure, uh, I just couldn't get this idea out of my head. Uh, and I can get a little bit manic when I have an idea. 
So at that moment, at eight o'clock in the evening, I turned to Sherry and I said, do you want to help me make something? And um, well, luckily she's an engineer too. So she was like, yeah. So that night we went to my little workshop and we built the first prototype out of acrylic plastic. So the next day my brother tried this thing out on his tiny little toy quadrocopter. And uh, it, it was pretty feeble, really. You know, it refused to work most of the time. Um, but I saw the look of concentration on Ollie's face. And I saw how much he was enjoying the challenge. And at that moment I thought, maybe this idea was worth developing. Many prototypes later, uh, with input from a little team of engineers assembled from various people I've met on my travels from all around the world, we now have a claw which is capable of picking up most small things. It requires no electrical actuation and no power source. The claw is a highly efficient light and structure made from high strength aluminium alloy with self lubricating nylon joints and suspended from a practically unbreakable Kevlar cord. The whole thing weighs less than 20 grams. We'll also be making a limited edition version made from Sheffield stainless steel, which is a little heavier but fully salt waterproof, rust proof and flame proof. So on behalf of the rest of the team and myself, I'd like to invite you to pledge towards the first production batch of this product. The target is set for us to operate at a scale where we'll break even and not lose any money. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, if we meet that target, the whole project will be a success. If we exceed that target and we can actually operate on a profitable scale, then that would just be a terrific bonus. Um, but as far as we're concerned, at this stage in our lives as graduates and undergraduates, it's not really about profit. It's really more about experience, exposure, and uh, just getting out there and putting ourselves on the map. My name's Ben Cardouche, and I thank you for your time. Well, I got me a